ID cards and stuff. The students are fighting back. They get what's happening. They're saying no. And the number one issue in America is not men with a bunch of chemicals in them thinking they're women. And I don't dislike these people that are like this. Don't, don't, don't bring me down to that level of, 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 of actually buying into all this. It's just complete fruitcake land. This country is being sabotaged. I mean, they've spent how many hundreds of billions on a fighter plane that isn't even as good as an F-16? That's all to sabotage everything, to end human flight. It's all going robot. Human programs are being sabotaged. I've had top astronauts on repeatedly, concurring. Hum humans are being sabotaged. Humans are being sabotaged. You can call it whatever you want, some you know weird globalist projection because they hate themselves, so they hate the general public and want to eradicate us, or it's the devil, or it's whatever it is. That's what's going on. Our prosperity, our will, our creativity, our honor is so great that if we just stand up for what's good, humans can transcend. We are incredible. We're made in the image of God. But instead, we are watching the great sink. We're watching the great fall. And it's, it's just absolutely unspeakable. So let's go to this uh, piece. Let's go to this piece right here out of uh, the local news, KMOV, here it is. But why would you want to? I mean, I think it's good when you say somebody's a he or a she and, and he called me. That kind of tells somebody something. If you go, I'm gonna go meet Z, Somebody's thinking you're meeting somebody from a different planet, I guess. For some, like State Representative Bill Dunn, it's a foreign concept, using words like Z instead of he or she. But UT's Vice Chancellor of Diversity and Inclusion says these pronouns have been around for a while, and they have been part of campaigns and dialogues at other campuses in the country. They're not so new. They've been around. You know, if you do a Google um, search for it under inclusive language, you know, it'll come up. It's a way to... Um, be respectful of students who identify as gender um, non-conforming. I thought somebody was sending an email around that, that somebody was just, you know, uh, fooling people with it. And then when I found out it was true that we actually have people getting paid a lot of money to sit around and come up with this nonsense. During the first week of class, UT suggested teachers ask students to provide a name and pronoun instead of calling roll. That's because a name on a roster may not reflect the same gender the student uses now. And it makes me think about um, how might this impact um, climate for students who are gender non-conforming? Um, how might it impact retention? You know, you just got to think about guy. that when people don't feel as though they matter, um, that you're not trying um, to be welcoming. This is about everyone changing their language, getting rid of the English language to adopt cult speak. With a weird guy with like weird cult eyes going, we want to make them feel like they're included as if so that people start seeing the language as in, as going to that. It's making the whole school a giant re-education camp while they're putting chemicals in the food to say you're a girl when you're a boy. You're a boy when you're a girl. And you can't use that language anymore. And it's happening all over the country. And I'm grieving what's happening. What you're seeing with me here on air is an ongoing situation where I constantly have guilt that I'm not figuring out what to do with this incredible platform, that I'm not doing enough to articulate to people just how over the top all this is. And I know you know, but it really does take getting retrospective and getting off the treadmill of life, getting off the hamster wheel and really getting down to brass tacks. Because I'm a guy that doesn't go to calls most of the time, doesn't have a lot of gas because I like to talk. I love to cover news. But every once in a while when this stuff really hits me and it's happening more often, it is incredibly painful like watching my family killed in a firing squad to focus on these people. And I just need to get out in nature and I just need to, to, to just pray to God. Because the betrayal of this age and the evil that's rising, I can feel it in my soul. And I just want to live in peace with everybody. I want to see humans work together. And I know you want to see that as well. And we have very bad people that don't. Let's back this up 10 seconds and go back to this bizarro person. I mean, this is just some of the most disgusting brainwashing 
And I told you they'll start getting rid of the language. This is it. This is a real cult takeover. This is what the colleges are putting out, what the churches are putting out. This is the big move. The Pope's about to show up. He's saying ab abortion's okay. It's no problem. World government's good. I mean, you're, you're seeing the globalists uncloak. They're making their move. Something big's about to happen. Is it a big war? Worldwide financial class? Probably all of it. And we've been holding them back, holding them back. They finally decided to make their move. The battle's on. Let's go to the clip. I need to sit around and come up with this nonsense. During the first week of class, UT suggested teachers ask students to provide a name and pronoun instead of calling roll. That's because a name on a roster may not reflect the same gender the student uses now. And it makes me think about um, how might this impact um, climate for students who are gender nonconforming? Um, how might it impact retention? You, know, you got to think about that when people don't feel as though they matter, um, that you're not trying um, to be welcoming. While the university says it's about inclusion and sensitivity, others believe it's taking things a little too far. People need to toughen up. They probably need to have the office of suck it up. Man, so again, they get everybody to be inclusive, which most people are. I mean, whatever, live, let live. Most Americans are libertarian at heart in major surveys. They're not Democrat or Republican. You ask them dry questions, they identify as libertarian. I mean, America's been the freest country ever in many respects. But that's not what this is. That's not what this is. This is change the language, mother, father, boy, girl, he, she. This is train us to talk exactly how they say. I told you it wasn't whacked out weird when they said we're going to ban brown bags or don't use the term brown bag. I told you it was whacked out when, again, it supposedly comes off as whacked out. I'm saying it's not whacked out. It's scientifically designed. And we're in the clutches of these mind warriors just jacking with everybody cold-bloodedly. They don't adopt and believe what they've been pushing, what they've been doing. No. They absolutely think their gods are going to merge with machines and live forever and all this other crazy garbage that we've covered here where they say it themselves. I mean, I'm not really coming up with any of this on my own. I've just read what they have to say, and it's crazy. And what's even crazier is the general public is faced with this, and they think it's a joke. They think it's funny. It's not. In the next segment, we're going to air John Bounds' were neutron bombs used in Yemen. If you're a radio listener and you want to see the video of this, infowars.com forward slash show. Uh, briefly, before we try to go back to some calls. We did get back in two of these amazing new products that had only come out once and then sold out because they were so popular, and that's the deep cleanse, total body cleanse, and then, of course, uh, the liver shield that has got the most concentrated herbs and compounds to open up your liver and to flush out the gallbladder. I mean, you've heard the reviews. We have informational videos below. You've heard the callers talk about it. This is something that big pharma and big medicine is not going to tell you about. Uh, it is dramatic. If you want to consult a healthcare provider beforehand, I suggest you do because it is it is it is amazing. Infowarslife.com. Both those products are back in stock, and until Sunday for one week only. We started it last Sunday. Ten percent off all of our great methylcobalamin and uh, the other mixture with the other good um, adenosyl cobalamin of the vitamin B12 is all in there together, and it's simply amazing. InfoWarsLife.com or 888-253-3139. And we're running it until Christmas, and then we'll never do it again. And I've done that with other shirts. So when I say it's collector's item, it is. Because whether Hillary is going to be forced to drop out will be decided, I think, by the end of this year. So we have Hillary Clinton for prison shirts. It's important to go to her rallies, to go out in public. It looks like a political shirt. It's really effective. And on the back, it says InfoWars.com, legalized freedom. And I want to thank you all for your support. You make this broadcast possible. Nathaniel in South Carolina, you're on the air. Yeah, um, at the top of the hour, uh, you asked a question that I'm perplexed with myself. It's kind of a ridiculous question. You asked, how do they get away with it? How do they think they're going to get away with it? Well, I, George Bush murdered a million Muslims, you know, he and Donald Rumsfeld, Paul Wolfowitz, and 
uh, how did they get away with it? You know, uh, Ronald Reagan brought, you know, thousands of pounds of cocaine into the black community. How did he get away with it? Lyndon Johnson lied about the incident in the Gulf of Tonkin led to a million and a half dead Vietnamese and 58,000 dead Americans. How did he get away with it? Because they always get away with it. Now, the reason I called is because I'm going to take issue with you about what you've been saying about Minister Farrakhan, because you, you've been being deceitful, okay? If you play what he said, what he said is absolutely on point. He said if we are murdered, you could probably tell I'm a black guy, if we are murdered and we have no redress from the federal government, we should stalk and hunt and kill those who kill now, you have attempted to take what he no, said. No, but then that was and integrated in clearly at police in general, not at the actual... Listen, I've said I agree with a lot of stuff Louis Farrakhan says. Louis Farrakhan said he agreed with my 1776 comment. There's some stuff I disagree with. I think that rhetoric, from my perspective, I disagree with your perspective. I don't think he's calling for as much as the blog talk radio guy saying go out and kill cops, uh, clearly. Uh, but, I mean, I took that as just in general... They are white. They are cops. And I agree there's a bunch of globalists that are above the law. And I've made films about Lyndon Johnson and the Bushes and the cocaine drugs being brought in. I don't think Reagan knew about that, but George Bush Sr. was running it. I mean, so I've exposed that, sir, and I totally agree with you. Uh, but the thing is, I just attack all the stuff that I see is corrupt. And I don't think Louis Farrakhan would be able to get away with that unless he's either intimidated the government, which may be, or whether he's been given a green light by Obama. I mean, I played the clip whenever he said that Obama basically murdered Gaddafi and it was wrong. That was absolutely true. So I just call like I see it. You may disagree with me. That's fine. I mean, either Louis Farrakhan is just really angry and wants to go ahead and have a war, which I can you know, get that, or he's with the globalist. And I don't know which one it is. What do you think it is? You, you, can't, you can't take what he says out of context. You constantly complain about MSNBC, CNN, taking things you say out of context. What he said in context is absolutely correct. And I promise you, if some cop pulled your wife over and put a gun to her head and blew her head off and you had no redress from the Department of Justice, the federal government, or anybody else, you would take matters into your own hands also. Uh, said, yeah, well, I would take my matters into my own hands. I would take matters in my own hands against the individual I wouldn't do it with a cop pumping gas. That's exactly what he said. He said, kill those who kill us. That is specific. You go after the individual that you okay, well, listen, I was saying it in the context that he should condemn the Black Lives Matter chant of give the pigs wings and all that stuff. He should condemn people shooting innocent cops in the back of the head and then say specifically that the people getting away with murder need to get in trouble. Like I said, the cops shoot the Hispanic, shooting the Hispanic for no reason in San Antonio better get in trouble. Or the, the white cop shooting the black guy only getting two years. That was a travesty of justice. I agree with you on, on, on a lot of those points. But in the main debate, the way Farrakhan's been taken for a month, and once he said that, the change reaction began. So I can see your point, and I think it's fair. But I think it's fair from my perspective. I'm not being deceitful or twisting. Here's the clip itself. So if the federal government will not intercede in our affairs, then we must rise up and kill those who kill us. Stop them and kill them. What's happening? The cops are getting stalked and killed. Feel the pain. Okay, that's enough. We've already played it twice yesterday. Now, let's, before, I'll let you have another word, sir, but I just want to finish up with this since you're articulate and made some decent points, and I can see 30% of what you're saying. I could have said it even better. And that's a part of this. I'm just exhausted and sick of it. You know, at a fundamental level, hearing white people are bad, white people are going to pay, that does intimidate me. It makes me upset. And then I know what weak-minded people are going to do. They're going to do some bad things. So I'm very, very sad. I'm very, very nauseated. Um, he's following the narrative. That's why I said he might be in with the feds. Of where Al Sharpton said the goal is to get the feds to come in and federalize police. Remember that clip two months ago? When the feds themselves have been taken over by the globalists, and the feds are the ones that killed the millions of Muslims that I was against. <laughs> and it's the feds funding uh, the Wahhabists right now to kill the non-radical Muslims. So, so that's what's going on. And he's saying, feds better come in and do something about this, or we're going to go after the people. And he's talking about locals. 
And the locals are a patchwork, a good departments, bad departments, 